Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me. I've got uh, this little project that we're going to do tonight. I'm going to go back and forth for a few minutes because I've got the cell phone Hello, set up everyone. here. And you can hear a vibration in the background. I'm going to turn off my speakers. Got, yeah. I was just testing to make sure that everybody could hear me. So, I know we're all trying to keep busy in these new and unusual times. So I thought I'd offer some uh, quick and simple art lessons for everybody to enjoy. Um, cognizant that a lot of people aren't going to have necessarily paints and brushes and canvases lying around. So I thought I'd start off with something pretty easy with some supplies that most people should have around. So this is the Gin product that we're going to do. Something similar to this. It won't be exactly like this. For those of you who do my classes regularly, you know that I have a couple of rules. First rule is always have fun. Second rule is cheat wherever possible. So we're going to have rulers and things that are circular to help us along with that. And your project is not supposed to look exactly like mine because it's yours. It's not mine. Mine's going to look like mine because it's going to look the way I would like it to look. Yours is going to look a little different. And we're all going to do something different. And I hope at the end you'll post your photo of the artwork that you've created on the Facebook page so I can see what everybody did because that's what I really like to see when I'm in class. My students will always tell you that I always say I'm excited to see what they have done, especially if it's something you can choose your own colors. So I know this looks kind of complicated, but believe it or not, it's not that complicated. I'm going to just put this over to the side right now. I'm going to keep looking over at the computer. So if you have any questions, you can type them in okay. and I will see them. And there's people waving at me online. So thank you. Um, so I've just got a blank sheet of paper. I've just got a stack of them actually right here. A pencil, if you've got a mechanical pencil, doesn't really matter at this point for, for what we're doing. And I've got a ruler, whatever street edge that uh, you've gathered up to use. So the first step for this project, uh, which is called Lines, Shapes, and uh, Negative Space uh, for Design. So you've seen similar patterns like this in colors, probably. Uh, on canvases that people use for their artwork on their walls. So this is the gist of how they get to do that. So I'm just going to take the ruler, lay it down anywhere, and make a line. Now I'm not going to have any of these lines cross over one another, but I'm just going to make some lines. So you follow along as I'm doing this. I'm just going to keep going in one direction different spacing I'm just moving and I can't really see it all that well as I go that direction so I'll come back over here and I'm just making sure all the lines are slightly different directions again I'm not making any of them overlap they're different spaces different widths apart different directions it's whatever I feel like at the time The number of lines is not important. It's just fill as many as you like onto your sheet of paper. So now it's really hard to see whether it's lying down, but you can see that I've got all my lines there. They're not overlapping. And they're just different directions, different spaces apart, okay? So this is really different for me, and there's actually a bit of a time lag as I'm watching it on the computer and what I'm filming live. So it's, it's a little surreal. I'm not used to this. I'm used to the people in the room with me, but we can't do that right now, so that's okay. We'll make do. 
Um, so while you're doing that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what else I have here with me. So I've got an eraser, just in case I make a mistake, heaven forbid. Uh, this is just a white uh, gum eraser. They're the best for getting all of the lines off. If you use the, the pink erasers at the end of your, your uh, pencils and stuff, that usually doesn't work so well. This one here, it's, it's an odd shape. It's gray. It's called a kneaded eraser. And as you can see, I'm kneading it together. And actually, this is what a lot of our artists use instead of the white eraser to erase lines as well. Because what you can do with this is if you've got to get into a little itsy bitsy tiny area and you've got to get to it, I don't know how well you can see that. I've got that made into a fairly pointy end because I could knead it into whatever shape I want. Then I could get into a little area without disturbing the other lines and, and get rid of the lines that way. Or I do something as simple as rolling it out and I could roll this back and forth a little bit harder than what I'm doing there now because I don't want to take the lines off. And you can pick up a lot of your lines and take them off that way. So this is a really, really neat uh, way to get rid of lines. I'm just using a 6B pencil right now. I also have with me, so this one I did earlier today, I used my black permanent marker, which this one has a fine point and a medium point, and this one has a thicker regular black marker. So when I went coloring, I used the thicker black marker for that piece and the smaller one for doing the lines and the circles right now. So I just see, hi, hi, everyone. I'm just checking over here again. Give me a sec. The speaker's thing's in my way, so I'm just making sure I can see all the comments. So no questions yet. That's good. And for those of you who are just joining in, all we have done so far is we've drawn some lines that are straight, yet in different directions, no overlapping lines so far on our piece of paper. So, I went scavenge hunting today looking for things that were round. So I've got a plastic cup, so it's two different sizes. Bottom and top are two different sizes got a sour cream container again the top and the bottom would be slightly different sizes I used a bottom of a round uh, paint container and I also used the round the bottom of the uh, drawing gum which is used for when you're doing watercolor painting so whatever I could grab oh and the masking tape because again that's a circle so we're going to do some more cheating now. So the gist of what we want to do now is I'm going to use the roll of masking tape and I'm just going to lay it down. And lay it down wherever you feel like laying it on your sheet of paper. And you can trace if you've got this. doesn't matter if you're using the masking tape or whatever round shape you have. I'm starting with a bigger shape. And I'm just going to trace around the circle, you know, like back when you did in school perhaps and I made a circle and you can see it goes across several of the lines that I've already drawn so now I'm going to take a different size and I'm going to do an overlap so this is going to be harder to show you so I've got the circle that's already there and I'm just going to make this one go part way over the circle and I'm going to trace around this. So far so easy, right? Sure you say. That's what they all say. No, it, it, it's not that bad. So now I want to make a different size. I'm going to take the other side of the cup or glass and trace around in a different area completely away from those other circles that I just did making sure I get all the way around there we go so now I've got 
three circles. Now, you can have as many or as a few circles as you wish. I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight circles in the one I did this afternoon, but I'm not going to do quite as many this time. So I'm gonna have another littler one with the masking fluid. I'm gonna trace around there. I'm going to do this bigger container. I'm going to move this up so you can maybe see it a bit better. And I'm going to have it off of the side of the paper, so I'm not going to see the full circle, sort of like how this one was on this design. You can see how it was just part way on there. I'm just going to do that. What else do I want to do? I'm going to do one more. I'm going to put another one down here part way off the edge as well. And let me look. Am I happy with that? I think I'm happy with the number of circles that I have. So I have six circles. So there's one off the edge there. There's two that are overlapping. There's two over here that are on the other edge and they're overlapping and that bigger one on the side. So I'll give you a few minutes for those who are playing along, following along right uh, live as it is and um, give you a few minutes to catch up. So except I did this first one this afternoon in black and white just because it was easier for you guys to see for me to take a photo and post it up and for definitely you to see this while I'm demonstrating it tonight. Now under the optional items that we had listed I had colored pencils, I had crayons, and I had markers. So if you have any of those and you feel colorful you can do this with color. I would stick with one color just for the purpose of this project tonight. But if you feel like you like this and you want to try it and see what different color combinations might look good, you can do that um, afterwards. I'm not going to do the black and white again because, well, I have this one here for you to look at. But I've got uh, some highlighters, so they don't even have to be you know, solid markers. I've got a uh, blue and I've got an orange. Now I've got pink and green and I don't know what else I got. Purple. There was a purple down in my other bucket. I've got, I got a whole bucket full of different markers, highlighters and everything in here. So I just held a couple out earlier. I think I'm going to go, I'm feeling the orange tonight. So I think I'm going to go with the orange. So the trick to not get mixed up, because this looks pretty complicated, but it's really not, okay, is to pick one spot and we work outward from that one spot. And I know it's, again, hard for you to see this when I've got it laid down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one and I'm going to fill it in. And I don't know how well you're going to see this, so give me a second to fill it in. And then because there's a bit of a delay, I'll be able to look over on the computer and see what you guys can see. Okay, you can see me doing it. That's good. Um, this is the first time I've done a Facebook Live trying to, to teach this. I've, I've, I've done it using, um, for income tax, showing other artists uh, how to fill out their income tax. So this is the first one that I've done that's uh, different. Looks great, thank you, Linda. All right, so we've got our first shape picked. And it doesn't matter which shape you picked, but you can see that I've just colored that one little shape in. So now the trick is to pick the shape that's near it, but diagonal to it. So 
the easiest way to describe it is to show it to you. And I'm going to fill this one in here. So uh, most of you know I'm a bit of a geek. And uh, I, I, I'm not that much of a math geek, but this, believe it or not, is one of the things that I cannot forget from school. It's the VOAT, which is the Vertically Opposite Angle Theorem from geometry. Yeah, I know, go figure. So you have two angles. They're vertically opposite from each other. To me, it's making a, a kite tail, a bow tie, whatever you want to, to call it, but they're opposite each other. Okay? So then we move to another one that's adjacent to the one that I just colored. So I'm going to go down again, trying to make sure that you guys can see, but I'll hold it up again. Now, if you don't have colors, I forgot to tell you this, you can just use your pencil to fill in. And again, when we get out of quarantine and isolate distance, physical distancing and all that good stuff, you can go get better supplies and fill in. So here we go. So we've got three sections colored in. You can see we went vertically opposite again. Okay, now so that you can see what's going to happen throughout the whole thing, I'm going to go a little bit backwards and go into this one that's between the first one I did and the one I just did, which is a really big area actually. Fill it all in. So you can see I do the outlines first, and then I can get a little bit faster because I can fill it in. Because if I've already done the outline with a thicker area, I don't have to be as precise, but yet I won't go outside the lines. Little trick. Okay, so now we're starting to see it come together. So we've got basically every other shape is going to be colored in. Now, um, you will eventually get to this, where we fill the whole entire sheet in. So I'm going to do that very, very quickly. And those who take my classes know that I will do this. And I say, usually watch along first, then start to do it. And while you guys end up doing it in class, I go back and quickly finish off everything so that you can see what the finished result is. So I'm going to do a little bit more of this and you guys can follow along. And for those who are coloring along with us, you can keep going. Now, don't worry if you make a mistake because here's the thing. Shh, don't tell anyone that you made a mistake. They won't know. Chances are they'll never see it. Look at all the stuff that's going on here. Somebody will miss it if you happen to mess one up, okay? This is your practice one. You're probably not going to frame this, although if you want to, I'm all for that. Um, this is just something to get us testing out that this uh, technology was going to work to my liking and to your liking, which seems to be so far good on my side anyways. And from what I, as I'm looking over at the computer screen to see what you guys see, it uh, seems to be fine that way, but certainly you will tell me if it's not. Um, but back to as, and this is, again, my students know that I do this all the time. I'll start talking about techniques and things as I'm doing the demonstration. So basically, anytime when you're first learning art, the very first concept you tend to learn is line and shape. It's, you know, art 101, basically. 
So I figured, well, why don't I start with Art 101? Because I don't know who's going to be tuning in. I don't know what your skill levels are. Usually when I'm having a class, I will ask people before they come. And depending on the type of class, if it's one of those paint-along classes, um, I basically assume everybody is the same and have never painted before at all. So I just go with that assumption. Now, I do get, you know, a fair number of my students who have been with me uh, for a while. And uh, I see Sherry is on, and Sherry's been uh, taking classes with me for, oh my gosh, probably about almost 10 years on and off now. And, um, and she keeps coming back as, as, as her uh, schedule allows, and that's what happens. I find sometimes people go through little spurts, and sometimes life happens, and you can't get back to class. Or sometimes I have people, um, Brenda, she knows I pick on her all the time, and I don't know if she's on line with us tonight, um, but she's been with me almost 12 years now straight, and there's not many classes that she misses. She will come for the advanced classes, because of course she's been with me for a while, so she will do the advanced things. Uh, but she also enjoys doing things that are not necessarily advanced. Like, this is certainly not advanced. It's fun. And it has a purpose. Again, Art 101, Line and Shape. So when you're learning about art and you're learning about what looks good to people, and I know that any of my students on here are going, why are you putting in an equal number of circles? Sherry says something. Finally finished a painting. I started three, there ages ago. The tiger, oh, the tiger eye, Sherry. I'd love to see it. You can send it to me, uh, you know, by messenger or email if you don't want others to see it, but you can certainly post it to the Facebook page too and everybody can have a look. But uh, yes, I remember. See the orange of the tiger, see? It's all coming together. I had no idea. But line and shape and form and negative space is what we've got going on here. So, so you think you're doing something really simple, but you're actually learning a lot about negative space by we're doing, you know, the ones that are blank are the negative space, obviously. So negative space is as important, if not more important to a painting sometimes, than the actual pieces that you do, okay? So, back to me having an equal number of circles. It happened. It happened on this one, too. Apparently, I had eight. I know. I, I'm, I'm horrified with myself. Composition-wise, it is best to have an odd number of objects in your painting. Okay? Unless it it dictates that something equal should be in your painting, like an even number. So if somebody is painting a seagull, well, they're probably going to paint one seagull, of course. And then if you're going to paint more than one flower, say, maybe you paint three flowers instead of two. However, if you were going to paint salt and pepper shaker, for instance, well, obviously two makes sense. But just to throw something in, if you if you were looking at some still life uh, paintings, you can actually throw a third object in. So maybe you throw a lemon down into the composition. So then there's three objects. There's still a pair that makes visual sense to us and in our brain. We're looking for two, you know, objects, salt and pepper, obviously. My marker's starting to run out, so we're going to skip over that one, big area, and go back to this. So just, just as an observer, whether you're an artist or not, odd numbers make more sense. Okay? Now, you may end up with something like quandary that I'm in here now, which I don't know how well you can see. So I've got a straight line going down here. 
nothing is intersecting it okay so I've got nowhere to go with this negative and non-negative space so it's almost like I've got a brand new painting so this is the first one and then over here is all by itself kind of thing so I'm just gonna pick this circle here or that shape which is a part of the circle and fill that in and just kind of carry on but it's not gonna look quite right let's see things happen happy accidents or not so happy accidents as the case may be but we will deal with it and when we do acrylic paintings uh, my students know I say this an awful lot as well is acrylic is very very forgiving you can go ahead and paint back over it once it's dry and you can fix a multitude of mistakes with acrylic paint fairly easily because once it's dry you can just keep painting over it and as long as you're using a color that's not too transparent it's pretty easy to fix just looking for okay Sherry's gonna post or send me some pictures or send it to everybody who knows all right so that, I, I think you get the, the gist of it. I would fill this area. I'll fill another one in because, you know, this was the odd section. And you might have an odd section where something didn't quite overlap and you didn't know what to do with it. So we got that done. So if there's enough interest and there's been, you know, enough people have enjoyed this. I will keep doing these sorts of things. I did send out a survey um, to my uh, former students and people who have indicated that they would potentially like to do classes at some point with me um, about a week and a half ago now uh, by email through my survey monkey and asked people what date what days and what times would work best if they wanted to join so I, well the first question i asked was would you be interested and yes overwhelmingly people said yes so free is good right doesn't matter but uh wednesday evenings and sunday afternoons was the winner out of what people said and to tell you the truth that's that's consistent to what I've seen in the past with other surveys I've asked. Tuesdays and Thursday nights used to be my painting teaching night in class because that was when most people wanted to to come out and paint. I used to do Wednesdays and Mondays. There used to be a time I was doing four nights, I was teaching four nights a week. So I've slowed down a bit from that. All right. Now, I know there's a little bit more for me to do, but I'm going to get all wild and show you something that you can do if you wish to, if you went and did color or you want to do color in the future. Another lesson that you didn't know you were going to get. Complementary colors. There's a color wheel, which is a whole other different lesson that we can do at some point in time. But basically a complementary color is something that goes well with one another. Two colors in this case. On the color wheel, a complementary color is directly across the wheel from the color you want. So I've been working with the orange. Complementary color is probably, as you guessed it, it's in my other hand, it's blue. So blue, if these were oranges and I was painting a still life of oranges and wanted to have a nice background to make the oranges stand out even more, then they all were already going to stand out, I would make my background some shape of blue or shade of blue because it's the complementary color. It makes it pop. It's pleasing to our eyes. And that's why you do it. So I'm just throwing in a little different variation here so you can kind of see how the blues do work, believe it or not. 
with the orange. Now, this is the odd matchup, as we call it when we're teaching color theory. And my mom's on. She's she's just watching. She's not drawing. She says, "Now I'm going to get in trouble because I talked about her." Um. No, she won't get in trouble. I won't get in trouble for that. I can get in trouble for much more than that. Um, so the other complementary colors that you're probably more familiar with, and I'm only going to do the blue in the circle areas. I'm not going to go do it down into the lines, okay? Just the lines. I'm just going to do it in the circles, just so you can see just a little different... Again, this is all a, a lesson in, in composition as well. But back to the complementary colors. Christmas time, what do we always see? Red and green, right? Guess what? Complementary colors that are across from one another on the color wheel, which if I had to think about talking about the color wheel, I would have had my copy in here with me for another lesson, another day. So there's one more set of complementary colors because uh, let me back the bus up a little bit so when we're talking about colors we've got primary colors most people know that that is red and yellow and blue and they sit now see I'm gonna do it anyways on the color wheel you'd had red blue and yellow okay they would be across from one each other equidistantly then back to kindergarten red plus yellow is orange red plus blue is purple or other various colors that it could be called these days indigo or whatever and yellow and blue make green so you've got six points on your thing which is probably backwards to you that you can't really see but red and green are opposite on the color wheel orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel which leaves the so-called Easter colors that everybody should have just known about which is the purple and the yellow are actually complementary colors that's not a great color wheel but you know I think you get the gist I'll show you a proper one next time so you're learning all kinds of stuff by just doing a bunch of simple lines and shapes and coloring them in so it's amazing how much you can learn just by something that looks so simple and you're kind of like going oh well Five-year-olds could do this. Well, yeah, they can. They can learn about colors and complementary colors and space and design just as well as we can. When I'm teaching class, usually if somebody's doing, so I do what's called artist choice and everybody's painting something different, like Sherry was painting the tiger eye and somebody else could be painting still life somebody could be doing flowers somebody could be doing um you know boats or something like that it could be anything um i always show everybody different things and we talk about different compositions and and light direction and backgrounds and foregrounds and competing colors and tones and values there's a whole bunch of different things but believe it or not we've covered off a lot so far in this. Now see that just gives it a little bit of a different funky look. You can actually do this on a canvas yourself. You can get paints and you pick some complementary colors or colors that you like. They don't have to be complementary. It's just they will be a little bit brighter and bolder if you pick ones that aren't complementary. Um, and do it to your decor and actually hang a painting on your own wall just by doing something simple like this. So 
because not everybody has access to paints and brushes and canvases, I'll be doing a bunch of different uh, things, believe it or not. Um, crayons we're actually going to use if people have crayons. Um, I don't have any crayons. I've got something that's called pastels, and they're oil pastels, and they're similar to crayons, but better for what we'd be doing with it. But, you know, if you've got crayons, when in Rome, you can use those. I'm going to do a lot more drawing things, not just necessarily straight lines and uh, circles, uh, but we can draw along or learn how to draw uh, I think I've got a turtle that we're maybe going to draw at some point. Um, just because, like I said, not everybody has supplies available to them right now. So I want to keep it so that the most people can enjoy this. And I've got two more places to fill in and then I'm calling mine done. I'm just checking. No, no more questions. Does anybody have any questions? You can just type it in there. And if you have questions that you don't want to type in that everybody can see, you can certainly uh, message me or send me an email. And uh, we can have a chat over email or messenger or what have you. If you're working on something and you have uh, a question about it, you can send it along to me. Uh, I know my cousin Kim. I don't know if she's on there or not tonight. I can't really see that far without my glasses to tell you the truth from here to the computer. I just barely see. And there's a few more comments there now, so I can't see who commented beforehand. Um, she asked for some specific uh, things to be covered. So if there's something that you would like to know, a subject, a technique, whatever it might be, I can attempt to cover it depending on what it is and if it lends itself to trying to do something like this. Now, truthfully, I've got my cell phone taped with this tape to um, a magnifying glass, actually. If I'm going to be truthful, I'm going to be truthful. It's a magnifying glass that I use for when I'm doing detail work. And it's just on an arm. If I'm not, I can see. I can move this a little bit. Um, that's what it's taped to right now. I have a proper stand coming sometime in the mail. They're telling me it's coming sometime in May. But apparently I still think it's March. So I think there's a lot of people that still think it's March. Not just me, to tell you the truth. But yeah, when I posted this and said, tonight, we're going to do this. And yeah, I put in March. Yeah. Thanks, Karen, for telling me I'm not in March anymore, that it's April. Because I don't know what day it is anymore. So, turn that back over. So now I have orange and blue things going on. You know, we could even be more psychedelic and, and color the blank things in uh, with another color. That's totally up to you. And this is what I like to see is what colors did you pick? How many circles? What did you do? That's the kind of stuff I like to see and get excited about when we're doing things. And that's the black and white one again. So I'm going to take some better pictures. Well, there was a pretty good picture of this one that I posted earlier. But I'll take a picture of this one as well. And I don't see any questions coming through right now so i hope that uh this kept you busy and occupied and wasn't too boring or too simple or anything like that um and uh stay tuned and i'm gonna see how we did tonight and if we can schedule another one of these maybe same time next week and uh let me know if you want to oh look i see midge Hi, Mitch. I haven't seen you in a while either. Mitch used to come to sing. Oh, and Sean. Hi, Sean. Things pop up on my on my phone too that I can see sometimes. So, again, all new to me. I'm I'm more of a people person. Sean will tell you too. He knows. He's nodding his head. People person. He's a people person too. 
and um, hopefully this was a little bit of enjoyment for a little bit for everyone and oh I see Ro Rowena thank you Rowena glad you enjoyed it and um, like I said if you have any comments questions suggestions send them to me and um, hopefully we can keep doing this and hopefully we won't have to keep doing this for for very long but um, I think we'll be at this for several weeks for sure oh cool Sherry's son Ryan was doing it along with us too so that's good so um, thank you again everyone and I look forward to sort of seeing you as 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 best I can anyways through this um, and let me know if you thought the Facebook live worked well or if maybe we should try doing this through Zoom or Skype or something else. Thanks. Bye.